Hi folks, today I got a Moran's 2265B up here on the bench. A friend of mine brought it by, says it's dead, doesn't know what's going on with it. I have nothing else to go on but that. Haven't tried to power it up yet, but let's pop the cover off and take a look at it and see what's going on before we try to power it up. All right, so I've got the cover off here and uh, she's a dirty girl, but uh, I don't see any parts missing. Um, nothing burned. And I got the bottom off, so let's take a look at that. All right. This doesn't look too bad here. Uh, looks like got a broken outlet here on the back. Doesn't appear to be touching anything. Let's take a look. Yeah. Let me pop it up so you can get a look at this. Uh, all right. This outlet's been broken, but it looks okay. Let's see what the fuse looks like. Like I said, it wasn't really touching anything. Ah, uh, look at that. A little aluminum foil around the fuse, huh? Nice, I hope nothing got really damaged by that. Okay, let's see. Well, the meter says the aluminum foil is good. All right, so let's put the proper fuse in here and pile it up in the dim bulb tester and see what we get. Okay, I've got it fitted with a proper fuse, five amp for this model. It had a three amp in it that was wrapped in aluminum foil. I unwrapped it to see if uh, the fuse was blown or to see if there was any chocolate inside. But anyway, uh, the, the fuse was blown, it was a three amp, calls for a five, so that may have been the problem. So let's fire it up on the dim bulb. I've got a 100 watt bulb in here, which should be appropriate for an amplifier of this size and see what we get. It doesn't look bad, but it is not coming out of protection. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay. All right. So we just want to see if we have any DC on the outputs. So I'm going to probe an emitter resistor on each channel and just see what we get. That channel doesn't look bad. Neither channel looks bad, but it's not coming out of protection. Let's see. Got 36 volts. 36 volts on the power supply. Probably appropriate for being on the dim bulb. We may have a problem with the protection circuit. We're going to have to uh, get a schematic up here and see what's going on. Okay, well, I didn't see any overt problems with the output stage. I'm looking in here now, and there's definitely some issues here. I don't know what's keeping it in protection, but I'm going to have to pull this output stage. If you look down in here, right where the end of my finger is, let me get a uh, chopstick for pointing. This is a capacitor. This is what they look like without their pants on. The, um, I found the casing rolling around in here, which of course now that I'm looking for it, I can't find. In any event, I'll find it and show it to you. So this is a problem, as is, let's see if we can get some light in here. This emitter resistor right here, 
is not soldered in. So we're going to have to see what's going on in here. Plus, again, difficult to see, and that light might be in the way of the camera, but I believe this resistor here is burned. So let's pull the output stage off of here and get a better look at it because we definitely have some problems. Okay, so I've got the amplifier module pulled out of here. Now you can see this is actually a capacitor. This is the case I found inside the uh, receiver. You can see there's nothing in it. This is what's actually inside an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, it's usually just wrapped up like this and you can see it's just destroyed. We also have a burned resistor here. A burned resistor here. It's a little bit of glare so I'm not sure how well you can see that. I uh, saw another one that looks suspect right here. This resistor is pulled out and interestingly the, the other channel looks like it had been worked on because this resistor is stock. This one's been replaced and they lost one of the standoffs so they just soldered it down like this. So we'll put a standoff in there and if the resistor lead isn't long enough we'll just replace it. So we've got a few things going on. I don't know if we actually saw that this resistor is burned as well. So I'm going to uh, pause the camera here and I'm going to mark on the schematic which ones are visibly burned and we'll see if we can find a, a path of uh, damage. Okay, so I've circled everything I see that is visibly burned or defective. We'll still have to check a few things, but currently it looks like this resistor is burned, this resistor is burned, this resistor is burned, and this capacitor exploded. And we're going to want to look at the outputs. And by the way, the other channel was repaired previously, and it looks like what I would refer to as a TV shop repair, because they did this, and they also used NTE replacement transistors, which we tend to shun. Um, they're kind of general purpose and generally speaking they don't work well in these applications long term. So I'm going to unscrew all of these. We're going to test them. These are probably okay. They're going to be replaced anyway because of the NTE and I suspect we may have a problem on this channel as well uh, with these outputs as well. All right so let's start checking these transistors. I'm going to pull the first one out here Provided, of course, I back the screws all the way out. Yep. Okay, this one is 2SB645, so that's going to be a PNP transistor. So we're going to check that by placing the black lead on the base and putting the red lead on the emitter. That looks good. Base to collector. That looks good. Collector to emitter. Dead shorted. You have to check them like that. If you check the other way, red lead to base, black to emitter, looks good. Red lead to base, black lead to collector, looks good. But we have a dead short collector to emitter. So it's very important that you check all those different directions not just the diode junctions themselves but also between emitter and collector this is the npn so we will place the red lead on the base red lead on the base black lead on the emitter that's not good we have 0.1 volts we should have between 0.4 and 0.6 base to collector also not good. Collector to emitter, dead short. Both those transistors are bad. The other channel is probably okay. It's usually rare to have two defective channels. It happens, but not that often. 
I usually take a pencil and make a quick note. This is the 2SB, so that's going to be a PNP, so I just make a P here. And this is going to be the NPN. Come on. Okay. I suspect these are going to test okay. So this is what they should look like. Yeah, we have 0.5 base to emitter, about 0.5 base to collector, and we have open lead between emitter and collector, and that's what we're supposed to have. We'll check this guy out, and it's not going, neither of those are going back in. We're getting a whole new set of output transistors here. Okay, now this is an NPN, so we have to put the red lead on the base. Now, remember, on these TO3 transistors, when you hold them like this, these leads are closer to this end than this end. So it's going to be emitter, base, and the body is the collector. So if we go like this, it tests good. We get 0.5. Base to collector, good. Emitter to collector, also good. And you can check them the other way if you like. Generally speaking, if they dial check good in one direction, you're good. But you have to remember to make that last check between the emitter and collector. All right, so we know we had emitter to collector shorts on this channel. So we're going to go back to this, and we're going to circle these guys. Sorry, keep knocking the camera here. Okay, so we are going to want to check all the way back here all the way back to here. There's a good possibility we have shorted transistors in here. Remember, with direct coupled amps like this, it's not unusual at all to have your failures cascade back. So we have bad outputs, blown um, capacitor here, probably over voltage blew it out when these shorted. Uh, good possibility our drivers are bad. We need to check our pre-drivers because this guy is burned. So uh, we've got a work cut out for us. So I'm going to pause the camera here, and we're going to take a look at the board together. Okay, so we determined that our outputs are shorted. They're shorted at the emitter to collector. So we're going to want to go back, and we are going to want to check our drivers, our pre-drivers, and we're going to want to check everything in between here. Uh, it's a good possibility we may have some open resistors here that we haven't found yet. These 10 ohms would probably go. This 300 ohm certainly burned. But uh, let's start checking to see what our pre-drivers look like. And let me put the meter here so we can both get a look at it. Let's just put something under it. There. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to check is our driver which is Q760, and that is this guy right here, 760. 760 is a PNP, so we're going to put the black lead on the base. And that looks good there. Our base to emitter looks good. Our base to collector looks good. Our emitter to collector looks good. So let's check 759, which is the NPN. And that's this guy up here. So I'm going to go base to emitter. Okay, that's shorted. Base to collector is not bad, but our base to emitter is shorted. And that is 759. So it's circle this guy and then we're going to want to check 757 so let's see 759 757 is this guy right here I don't know if you can see it behind these emitter resistors okay so 757 is an NPN red lead to the base black lead to the emitter dead short in base to collector not bad. So we've got base to emitter short on that. So 757 looks bad. 
Now you can see our path of destruction is starting to become clearer because we have a shorted transistor here. We have a shorter transistor here, which is what caused this resistor to burn. A lot of people that don't have knowledge of electronics will see burned parts and replace them and they'll just burn up again. You need to determine why a part burns up. There's always a reason. And if all you do is replace burned parts, you're just going to burn more parts. I'm not trying to chastise anybody, but you do need to have an idea of how things work before you can fix them. Um, I cover this at work with a lot of people. You can't fix something if you don't know how it works. Some things you can see because they're mechanical in nature, and when they malfunction, it becomes a little, it's a little more apparent. Not so with electronics. You need to have an idea of how they work and an idea of how to troubleshoot or test. So anyhow, enough haranguing here. So we know we have a problem here. Um, usually, once you find good transistors, you don't have problems behind them. Incidentally, this transistor 760 is good. And I was trying to find 758. Now, I don't know if you can see the board here, but it says 753. Right here. However, I, that is not 753. If you look here, we have Q760. And this is actually Q758. Either the 8 got scratched and it looks like a 3, or the board was silk screen wrong. Both of which are possible. Uh, Marantz was uh, known for doing this. Anyway, so we found 7, 6, 758 is PNP. I suspect this is going to be okay. I may be wrong. I think I'd be used to it by now. There we go. That's okay. I think we have a bad emitter base junction on this guy. We'll have to look at that. There's a possibility it's a Darlington. The, the schematic doesn't indicate it, but it's sure testing like one. Anyway, we'll have to look at that. So we know we have several bad transistors, bad outputs. Uh, and we're going to have to replace some of these transistors and burn parts before we can even begin to test this again. So let's turn the camera off and see what we're going to need. By the way, I've mentioned this before, taking other amplifiers apart, but it can't be stressed enough. Before you go to lift this board off the heatsink assembly, it's extremely important to make sure that you have removed the screws holding down the thermal tracking bias diodes. If you break one of these, you are going to cry. They are difficult, if not impossible, to find. And if you break one, you're just going to be out of luck. So the first thing I do before I take any of the other screws out is I make damn sure that I have these unscrewed and that they'll lift off the board. And now we have it off. And no tears. So I'm going to start taking these burned parts out and seeing what we're going to need to replace them. Because remember, a lot of these parts are obsolete now. We're going to have to use substitutes. Um, I generally take the coward's way out and I find a thread online from a technician whom I trust and use their recommendations. Uh, after a while, you get a feel for who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. You take their word for it. Um, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of really, really smart people out there. The trick is figuring out who they are. Anyhow, let me get to this and we'll get back and take a look at it. Okay, so I've gone through the entire shorted output stage. And uh, what I found was we had bad output transistors. We had an exploded capacitor here. 
I'll open our burned resistors here, here, and here. We had bad transistors here, bad drivers, um, bad pre-drivers. These were bad, these were bad, these resistors. This resistor was open, this one was not. Now, I should have seen DC when I checked at the emitter resistors. I believe the reason I didn't is the one emitter resistor was lifted completely out of the board. Uh, and that was most likely the one I measured. The other thing is sometimes those pointy probes don't give me the, the voltage right away. I got to kind of poke a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to clean them up or replace them or what. But that was a problem. And I haven't tested it yet, but these are what I've found so far. Now, I want to show you the parts that I took out. And I've divided them into two categories here. Parts that were visibly bad and parts that were not. So if you look down here, we have visibly bad parts. You can see burned resistors, exploded capacitors. Um, it's pretty easy to see that these parts were bad. What wasn't easy to see and required testing was that all these transistors were bad. Most of them were dead shorted or at least seriously leaky. And this is why you need to have an idea of what you're doing. Uh, and this is what drives me nuts about the recapping movement. If you recap this output stage, it would have done nothing to address the problems it was having. Okay, you got to repair this stuff first. That's why I haven't replaced any of the other capacitors on there. I haven't even tested it yet. If I test it and everything's good, I will probably change out the rest of the capacitors on the board. But right now, we just want to make sure that we can get it working. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing I wanted to point out is the repairs that were done previously on this amplifier were not the best. And they were what I refer to as TV shop level repairs. TV shops have, a, have to turn around a lot of stuff to make any money at all. So you can see instead of taking the board off, they soldered these resistors to the leads of the old ones here, here, and here. And they used those NTE uh, replacements, which we tend to shy away from. NTEs are general purpose. They may work, they may not. You're far better off using something else. I replaced all the outputs with on semis. And that's generally, most of the semiconductors I get are made by on semi or some other reputable manufacturer. Not to say NTE isn't reputable, but they're more of a general purpose replacement. We want to keep out of this, out of our audio equipment. <clears throat> so anyway, I've replaced these resistors, I replaced these transistors, I replaced all these transistors. So we're going to be testing this fairly soon. By the way, one of the things I did want to discuss about this uh, repair is if somebody with little repair experience opened this unit up and saw these burned parts, they might think, well, if I replace these burned parts, it'll start working again. But unfortunately, in most cases, these parts would simply burn up again, which indeed is what would have happened in this case. Um, should you choose to work on your own equipment, of course, you do so at your own risk, but you need to have enough experience to know where to look to find the root cause of your problems. These burned parts are not our root cause. They are the result of these semiconductors shorting. Once they short, these burn up, or in the case of the capacitor, explode. So we need to find out what the root causes are. Take care of those, or else we'll simply burn up the parts we replace. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad, but know that none of us were born knowing how to fix this. It was something we learned in, in most cases over many years, or at least several years. Lots of reading. I, I went to night school for a year and a half. Um, there's, there's a lot more to it than just looking for your burned parts. So I just wanted to talk about that briefly. So I've got the output module mounted back in the amplifier, and we're going to crank it on with the dim bulb and see what we get.
All right, the dim bulb is reacting normally. It hasn't come out of protection. Oh, it just now came out of protection. So, it's very slow to come out of protection. That usually um, is a bad timing capacitor. So I'm gonna turn this off and uh, we're gonna see what kind of signal we can get out of this. Okay, I'm forgetting a lot of things tonight. I, um, I turned the bias on both channels all the way down because we changed all the output transistors and I changed a lot of transistors on the affected channel. So I wanted to make sure that the bias was all the way down and we'll, ha we'll have to set that. But um, for testing purposes, this should be perfectly fine. I'm going to inject the signal directly into the main in and bypass the rest of this unit. I just want to see if our output stage is going to work. Okay, it's not coming on, so let me see what's going on here. Okay, it appears the power cord may have a problem too. All right, I got it to fire up. Okay, it's just come out of protection. And it's passing no signal at all. Okay, all right, we still got problems here. All right, I'm gonna stop this, take another look at it, and we'll see what we find. All right, folks, give it up for the rookie of the year. I didn't have the speakers engaged. Uh, okay, let's see what we can get out of this thing now. Okay, it's out of protection. Oh, brother. So we have one good channel and one really not good channel. Okay, I'm going to have to probe through here. Wow. 42% distortion, huh? Okay, let's get a scope probe and figure out which channel our problem's in, the one we worked on or the other one. Okay, so here's what I've got going here. I turned the receiver upside down, I pulled the output module out, I plugged everything back in, and now we can safely probe it. I have a piece of cardboard here isolating this from anything underneath the amplifier, and we can go through here and find out where our problem is. Now, I always power it up with the dim bulb just to make sure I haven't got anything plugged in wrong because it's easier to stay out of trouble than it is to get out. Dim bulb acts normally. Unit comes out of protection. Okay, I'm going to plug it in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a base or emitter on one of these outputs to see which channel is causing our problem. So if we look at this channel, give it a little output. There you go, that channel is good. This channel is where our problem is, and this is the channel we worked on. So we need to see what I missed. So I'm going to turn it off, give it a good visual examination, and see if there's anything else I might have missed, and then I'm going to have to take some voltage readings. Okay, so I found the problem I was having with the one channel. Um, this is not unusual, but it's been a while since it happened to me. Had an open emitter resistor. If you look down here, I had to replace this resistor. 
And if you look at my LCR meter over here, you can see that it is just completely open. This should be 0.33 ohms. And completely open like that is why we got the waveform we got. So now if we put some signal in, and my analyzer cooperates, you'll see now we have decent output. Let's see what happens when we crank up the level a bit. Okay, so that's about, call it four watts. Sixteen. Thirty-six. There you go, there's our 65 watts of channel. So 2265, so that looks about right. So it looks like we finally got the output stage figured out. I haven't even looked at the rest of this unit yet. Uh, this was where the main problem was. So uh, I'm gonna stop this video here. Uh, we at least got it working. I do wanna go through the rest of this output stage and fix the problems from the previous repair. And of course, you have to set the bias and offset. And then we're going to move on to the rest of this unit because I have no idea of its status. This girl has had a rough life and uh, it wouldn't surprise me to find other issues in here. But I think we got the main issues with the output stage straightened out. Okay, so I'm going to stop this right here. I thank you all for watching. And as always, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks.